um, out of something roughly like 10,000 ideas, sometimes you're gonna get like five of them wrong. I'm kidding. Couldn't possibly be that many. 10,000, not the five. Uh, so just saying, right? Um, sometimes uh, things fall out of place, but for the most part, when you see retcons and changes like this, uh, it is for a very good reason. Uh, it's typically, uh, I'd say very thought out, but let's just say thought out. Uh, so uh, just wanted to explain that to you guys and uh, get that right out there in front of it all. Um, certainly if you guys have questions about that during the Q&A, um, we'll do our best to answer those. Okay, World of Sanctuary. This is a, a very much a switching of gears. It's not just gonna be concept art. Let's show you some in-game stuff. And I'm gonna show you three brand new areas today uh, that you haven't seen before. Three new zones from Diablo 3. Now, when I said that's not just concept art, of course it starts with concept art. So, but don't worry, there's, there's videos coming at the end of these segments, each of them. Um, so Chaldeum is the major trading center of the world. It, this is the focus of, you know, it's, it's the Rome of its time. It's where everything from the east, the west, the north, and the south comes through. It's that central portal. Now, uh, uh, just a really brief history of Chaldeum. Leonard already mentioned that there's a big refugee crisis here, and Belial's obviously behind it, and you know that, but you don't know how, when, where, uh, and why. Um, what, uh, th this uh, city had three major groups in it. They had the Zacharum priesthood, it had the uh, big merchant families, um, and it had the uh, Ishari Sanctum, which is the major wizard school. In fact, the wizards from uh, Diablo III studied here for some time. Um, these groups are always vying for power, and recently uh, Emperor Hakan uh, I uh, founded, the founder of this empire, sort of brought them all under his boot and finally made this city more organized, and since then it's you know, grown even more powerful and more wealthy. Um, and so while they're always you know, um, uh, still trying to vie for power, uh, Hakan did help a lot. However, Hakan died under uh, mysterious circumstances, and we're going to get to that in a second. And recently, the child emperor, Hakan II, has taken power. And this poor kid's just trying to survive until adulthood uh, so that he can take over properly. Um, uh, and I'll explain a little more about that when we get to the people of Chaldeum. Let's take a look at some of the areas. All right, so this is one of the trading passes that comes in from the west, and it's an overlook of the city. So you can see Chaldeum there below. Uh, here's one of the central bazaars. A tavern. Now, the, the society, and we're going to show a bunch of people in a second, is very stratified. In fact, literally, the rich people live above in this, this sort of uh, a Cloud City-like approach, these massive platforms um, above the poor people. This is actually a shot of the throne room, and you can see tiny little Emperor Hakan II there um, and some of his imperial guard. Uh, you do get to meet Emperor Hakan and talk to him and, and hopefully uh, help him out. So this is that child emperor, and uh, this poor kid, um, it, it's not a patrilineal society. Uh, emperor Hakan II was found through a Zacharum ritual, uh, and they hired the Iron Wolves, the mercenary company from Diablo II. It makes an appearance here again. The Zacharum worked with the Iron Wolves to find this kid, make sure you know the merchant houses and the um, Ashari Sanctum don't um, take control of him or kill him and try to put their own person in there. So the Iron Wolves, we'll take a shot here of a, a, a Zacharum priest in his um, fancy Chaldeum gear and an Iron Wolf on the left. Um, they've become sort of the Emperor's personal guard and, and you know, they're helping him in a, in a sort of Regency thing. In fact, Ashira is, is the leader of those guards. However, the Iron Wolves have recently been kicked out of the palace. You know, the Emperor ordered them out and replaced them with these new Imperial Guards. Uh, these is the guys in purple you saw in the throne room. They won't let anyone see him anymore. They won't let a Shearer near the gate. So she's out there trying to help the refugees, wondering whether she should still stick around the city, if she can help that kid, um, you know, what, what else she can do. And that's sort of the situation when the player arrives. All right, here's some more people of Chaldeum. This is just some of the concept art. You can see there's, uh, you know, um, some, some very cool variations, a lot of nice costumes. Some of the best costumes in the entire game can be found in Chaldeum. Um, really cool character art. So the Dalgur Oasis. Um, this is the central uh, farming region. It's where most of the water comes from the city. And this is the area, um, clicker. This is the area that, that allowed this little trading outpost to become the grand city. Without this source of water, without this massive oasis, Chaldeum would not be what it is today. So it's very important. Legend has it that this mysterious desert prophet named Dalgur came in from the wastes 
took the city fathers of this little trading town out uh, to the oasis and, and showed them this source so that they could grow. He, he promised, uh, he wanted them to name it after him and then he wandered back in the waste, never to be seen again. No one knows if that's a legend or not. So let's take a look at the Dogger Oasis. Here's our female monk uh, roaming through here. Belial's forces are all over this area, and many of the refugees came from here, so um, the water, you know, is a big problem, and people are starting to starve because uh, no farming is happening. Watch for the exploding plants. The, uh, the fauna is fun here. Flora and fauna. So this is a really cool area contrast wise from the, the super harsh deserts you're going to see in this region as well. Um, you know, it's, it's quite beautiful, um, but it's also very corrupted right now. So it's a, a great area for that. Moving on. The archives of Zoltan Kool. So this is our teaser area for today. Um, Zoltan Kool is a new character we've created. And he's actually one of the um, uh, original Haradrim with Jared Kane and um, what's the guy that took over Mephisto? Tell Rasha, thank you. Um, they, they founded the, um, the Haradrim, and they are the ones that tracked down the original Lords of Hell. I'm not going to tell you much more about Zoltan Kool, um, except he turned bad, and he turned bad fast and hard. He became the most dangerous man uh, in the world to the point where the other Haradrim and the wizard uh, and the sorcerers, everybody got together to try to kill this guy. Turns out they could not kill him. Uh, somehow he had gotten immortality. The best they could do was to cut him in half, bury his head with runes and guardians in one part of the desert, and put his body in an alternate dimension in a vain attempt to try to keep this guy from not coming back together and ruining everything. He's that powerful. So we showed a little bit of this, these sort of ruins that we had in BlizzCon 2009. Just these little side dungeons, all sandy and collapsed. It looks like this, but sort of ruined, and the magic was all broken. You get to explore the other archives, which for hundreds of years have sat um, uh, um, undisturbed, still, you know, sort of pregnant with the power of Zoltan Cool. So let's take a look at that. This is just a teaser. I'm not going to show you any of the monsters there. Um, I'm not going to tell you why you're there or what you're going to see, but it's again the female monk, and this time she has the scoundrel follower with her. This is just the entryway. Do you think Cool ever cracked a smile when he was alive? Seems to be a grim sort. Even the cruelest man finds something to give him joy. Yeah, uh, what gives Zoltan Cool joy is not good. Ha <laughs> ha 